Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Royal Chess. My name is Jan Marcos, I'm a Slovak Grandmaster and this is my fourth video on the uh, series um, on Carpo and his strategical play. Today we will have a look at the game Carpo Ullmann from Madrid 1973 and the strategical topic we are going to focus on is uh, how to restrict the opponent's piece. So let us have a look at the game. Uh, Carpo was white and Ullmann, the German Grandmaster, was black. White played e4, e6, so we are having the French opening d4, d5, knight d2. During his entire career, uh, Carpo preferred knight d2 to knight c3, because after knight c3 the, the knight can be pinned and the game usually uh, is more double-edged. After knight d2, white usually gets a very tiny uh, edge in a positionally interesting po uh, position where black doesn't have so much counter chances. Now black played c5, the main move, and when white took, black has got two options. He can either take with the queen, uh, but after that the queen usually loses one or two tempi uh, when retreating back to some safe square, or black can take with the pawn, uh, and this of course leads to free development for black, but also to a strategical problem, which will be the isolated pawn. Now white played knight gf3, knight c6, and bishop b5. This is an interesting nuance. Uh, uh, Karpo doesn't develop the bishop just to e2, he goes all the way to b5, because he understands that he's going to fight against the isolated pawn, which means that he will not have so much space in his own camp, because the isolated pawn creates the space advantage for the side um, possessing it, so black will probably have a small space advantage, so being having all the pieces around, like inside of uh, own position would be uh, unpractical. And also the side which is not having the isolated pawn usually tends to, to exchange some pieces. So white is not um, against taking on c6 um, if black forces it. So bishop b5 makes a lot of sense. Now black played bishop d6 and uh, lost the tempo. The thing is that after some knight f6, white can contemplate uh, giving a check on e2, so you can see how uh, logical uh, and how good it is that white doesn't have any any um, bishop on e2, and then black has problems with reaction because the, the bishop could be hanging. So black goes uh, rather bishop d6 and this knight will go to e7. So d takes c5, bishop takes c5, castling, knight g7, now white by knight b3 and black bishop d6. So white is black is thinking about creating maybe some attack against white's king, and also the bishop on b6 uh, would be more prone to some exchanges after bishop e3. So bishop on d6 is uh, maybe a more a bit more safer than on b6 and also more active. The other thing is or the the negative thing about bishop d6 is that now white is in a full possession of the d4 square, which is a very important blockading square. Um, however, Carpo found a nice way how to exchange the bishop from d6 anyway. He cannot go to f4, so he decided he will go all the way around. So he went bishop g5, casting, and immediately bishop h4. And the bishop, of course, is heading for g3. By the way, this is also the reason why uh, white didn't play h2, h3, trying to uh, get, um, um, trying to make sure that uh, the black uh, light square bishop doesn't come to g4, because after that he wouldn't be able to do this and take with the h pawn. So white decided that he would rather uh, live with the fact that black goes bishop g4, so that he can go bishop g3 himself. Now black really went bishop g4, and once this bishop appears on g4, it makes sense to play bishop e2 as Carpo did, because uh, with the bishop on g4, there was a very nasty pin, that's one thing, 
And the second thing is that uh, white would uh, be very happy if both pairs of bishops would be exchanged from the board. So bishop e2 and the thread is bishop g3, knight d4. And as we saw in uh, one of the previous videos, uh, once there are just heavy pieces or heavy pieces plus one light piece uh, fighting and white is fighting against the opposite um, against the isolated pawn, then it's quite difficult for the side having the isolated pawn actually to cover it. So white would be happy to exchange as many uh, light pieces as possible. Bishop h5, rook e1 it is very logical, getting the the uh, e, e file. Now black went queen b6 and white played knight fd4. So trying to exchange as many pieces as possible. And black refuses, he played bishop g6. Um, and as you can see, black is having no problems at all, like all his pieces are developed, and his only problem is really uh, the, the weak d, um, d5 pawn and the, the square in front of it, the d4 square. So therefore, Kerpo decided to play c3, to play it slowly and just um, make sure that he is having the full control over the over the d4 square. Black continues with with the development. Rook f8 and a typical Karpovian move. Bishop f1. Maybe Bishop e to f1. Um, if we had to pick one typical move for Karpo, it would probably be Bishop e to f1 or Bishop d3 f1 or something uh, like this. This bishop is waiting for his uh, for his chance in the game, and also if anything happens on the board, like I don't know, uh, white takes some material and black penetrates uh, to the first rank, it will not be a check because the bishop is waiting already on f1 and covering the 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 uh, g1 king. So a very interesting idea. Black played bishop e4, trying to show some activity and also maybe trying to uh, provoke some weakness. Of course, for example, f3, bishop g6 would be a quite a big achievement for black because now the king is much weaker than it would be with the pawn on f2. But white is fully able to tolerate the bishop on e4 and he just went bishop g3, bishop takes g3, h takes g3. So white has achieved to exchange the uh, the uh, dark squared bishops, and uh, this is very good for him because uh, he's having he's the only one on the board having uh, actually pawns on dark squares. So now he will be in full control of dark squares, especially of uh, um, of the b uh, the d4 square, but also the b4 square, e3 square, f4 square, and so on. So. Basically, without the dark squared bishop, black lost some control over the central region of the board. Now, black went a5, which is a very strange move and maybe uh, wasn't such a good idea at all. Um, and now, white played a4. Maybe uh, Ullman uh, thought that this is not possible, uh, that it is not possible to play such a move because after knight takes d4, uh, white cannot take with the queen, and maybe Ullman thought that white should take with the, with the pawn, where the situation would be changed, because the, the pawn would disappear, and the pawn on, uh, and the pawn on d4 would uh, also be an isolated pawn. Uh, but uh, queen takes b2 now, uh, is is uh, sorry, um, but Carpo took on on d4, and now Queen takes b2 is not working so well because of Knight b5, and White is having two unpleasant threats, Rook e2, catching the 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 Queen, and also Knight c7. So maybe this is what uh, Ullman didn't see, and after Knight takes d4, White is pretty much happy. Like when Knight c6, trying to force. Um, to force uh, white into some concession. This would be a concession. Knight takes c6, b takes c6. Black would be more, much more stable in the center. And also queen d2 would be a concession because after uh, takes 
takes, black could say that he was able to uh, force white to take on d4 with the pawn anyway. So maybe maybe the black's, black's game makes some, uh, some sense, but white is still able to play bishop b5. This move to the weak b5 square is possible only because black played uh, a7, a5 several moves before. So this was this is a clear sign of the drawback of the a7, a5 move. And black played rook ed8. And this is the position why, uh, for which I have chosen this game, because and why I'm uh, claiming that this game is about the restriction of opponent's pieces, because now um, Carpo was able to foresee what is what is going to happen on the board, and he understood that there is one piece who uh, can be driven into passivity, and the piece is is this e4 bishop who uh, in an ideal uh, world would be uh, would love to return all the way to e6 uh, but um, on and on e6 it would be uh, quite useful because it would cover the d5 square would be covered by the f7 pawn and white wouldn't be able to to enter uh, the e7 square so from e6 on e6 it would be very nice but for example on g6 it would be much less useful because this is diagonal where nothing is happening and also um, white could enter to e7 and also the d5 pawn would be um, weak so white decided to restrict the e4 uh, bishop with g4 which is a very good move knight takes d4 queen takes d4 queen takes b4 c takes d4 and now we can see that how the g4 move was useful really the black is having problems to get a nice fine square for this e4 e4 bishop and although the position seems to be more or less equal because both sides are having rooks bishops one isolated pawn in the center in fact the black is just struggling to survive and more maybe uh, this position is also already beyond repair uh, black went rook c8, which is a very normal move, and white draw the bishop to g6 and played rook e7. So, as you can see, this bishop on b5 is working on the queen side. Also, Im important factor is that this bishop prevents black from 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 really op op opposing uh, along the e file. So the white bishop is working on the queen side, and the black bishop is uh, would be happy to work on the king side, but there are these three nasty pawns which are just fighting against him. Now black played b6, of course, because the pawn was hanging. Rook a e1, h6, and now white went rook b7. And for black it is already very, very unpleasant, because this b6 pawn can be... Uh, covered only from like two squares and um, basically if bl black wants to cover also the d5 pawn then just one square is possible and that's the d6 square so black went rook d6 and white went rook e7 and of course having two rooks uh, on the on the seventh rank is a huge achievement and white would like to to just um, get rid of the g6 bishop and just take the the kingside pawns uh, and f4 f5 is a quite a huge threat so black was trying to fight against that and went h5 but white simply took and another pawn came to um, to help g4 bishop g6 and now white went f4 and now please uh, note how um, please note how uh, much the weakness of the king depends on the activity of the pieces. It seems that black's king is uh, safer than white's because the white king is, simply has no pawns around him, no pieces around him. Uh, but in fact, uh, black's king is in a grave danger and white's king is completely safe because white pieces are very active, whereas black has only got only one active rook, which 
can give some checks, but that's maybe um, all it can do. So so black really gave some checks, king e3, but there and there is no mating net, there is no other idea, and white is simply threatening to play f4 f5, and that's basically more or less the end of the story. So black decided that he doesn't want to have the bishop on h7 after h. Uh, f4 f5 and he cannot go, really go f5 himself because the g7 pawn is hanging so he went bishop e4 and sacrificed the f7 pawn hoping for some counterplay against this weak king white took and black went rook g6 and if black was able to take on g4 and then play rook g3 that would be a mate so black seems to be a, quite close to some counterplay but again uh, Carpo starts his strategy of restricting the opponent species and he goes g5. And now this rook is completely helpless, is not able to go anywhere and uh, moreover has to cover the, the g7 pawn. Black went king h7, white went rook fe7, black took on b2. So nominally again we are having a material equality but just for one move because bishop e8 that was the idea of of uh, rook f e7 is is um, simply crashing because this uh, rook is more or less mated it cannot go away because of the g7 uh, of the g7 pawn and also it cannot stay there because it's it's attacked rook b3 check king e2 rook b2 king e1 so <laughs> the king is uh, uh, looking for some nice way how to how to run how to run away um, basically after rook b1 it would go to d2 c3 and b3 so as kasparov pointed out in his my great predecessors so this is the e simplest way how to run away with the king so after king e1 black went rook d6 but of course this is some kind of desperation white simply took king h and went to e7 and as um, white just needs to go rook b8 and go away with the bishop well, maybe not to f7 but to all the way to h5 let's say to give a mate or the plan b would be g6 check and and just push the the, the g pawn simply there are many ways to win for white so that's why black decided to give up at this moment. So we had seen a very nice game, uh, strategical game uh, on how to fight against the um, uh, isolated pawn, but mainly on how to restrict the opponent species. If you can foresee how your opponent species and where your opponent species are heading, you can think to um, on how to just make it more difficult for them to get to their ideal squares or how to push them uh, to some passivity. And this is what Carpo has shown in this game um, on a master level. So this was Carpo Ullman on restricting the open species. Have a nice day. Bye bye. I'm looking forward to meet you again at Royal Chess.